In the sci-fi fairy tale The Matrix, the pleasures of the artificial experience of the simulation comes at the cost of human enslavement and sustenance through liquefaction. I know this steak doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth, the Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. The glamour of the steak is only in the mind, while the sustenance fueling the body of those inside the fairy world of the Matrix is in fact human remains. Like Eve eating the fruit from the Tree of Knowledge, once people learn the nature of the Matrix, they generally cannot return to their previous easy state of unknowing. Ignorance is bliss. Though technically a utilitarian recycling of corpses, effectively we are confronted with the viscerally uncomfortable taboo of cannibalism. Cannibalism is big in fairy tales. It plays on a number of anxieties, both concrete and psychological. Folklore scholars connect the fear of being eaten with the fear of losing the self. Children's fear of being eaten by their parents is natural. Their survival is always dependent on the care of adults, and the withdrawal of care can be as deadly as consumption. In Gretel and Hansel, Gretel has a nightmare in which she is in the witch's secret cellar uncovering corpses. She wakes to find that she has started her period, and she has entered womanhood, signaling new knowledge and maturity, and realizing her own capacity to produce blood. This is when she really starts to notice the underlying horror of her surroundings, and her doubts truly begin. Were the dreams I was having only the result of too much rich food before bed? Or were they a message? A warning? And was I now missing a chance to listen to myself? She expresses these fears to Hansel. Hey, there's something wrong here. But it's so pleasant. But tell me what hides behind that pleasantness. There are things here. Bad things. What bad things? The abundance, for one. What's that mean? It means too much. There's too much, and it isn't right. Where are the animals? From, from where does she draw milk? From where does she conjure up her endless parade of cakes? She also confronts the witch. Poems only keep for three days out of season. And that ham is unsalted. It must be going bad. And yet it isn't. The impossibility of the feast the children are being presented with must be spelled out for a 21st century audience. Through greenhouses, refrigeration, and global food markets, we are so used to all foods being available at all times that we may not immediately recognize the magical and sinister nature of this abundance. These impossible spreads of food bring to mind still-life paintings of the Dutch Golden Age. In the 16th and 17th centuries, the Dutch Republic achieved independence from Spanish rule, developing a booming international trade and experiencing huge economic growth. As a result, exotic items and foodstuffs became more accessible and ushered in an era of conspicuous consumption. Recognizing this desire, Artists began painting ostentatious still-life scenes called Pronkstilleven, often depicting elaborate banquets of food, both nationalistic and exotic. In some ways, these paintings were better than the real thing. The food depicted would never rot, never be eaten, never cease to stand in for the wealth of its patron. The consumer culture illustrated in these paintings has been compared to Instagram foodie accounts today. People still recognize the way the allure of food may stand in for the allure of the one paying for it. While these paintings could showcase an ever-fresh abundance, they also came with moralistic undertones of memento mori and venitas. This opulence served as reminders that nothing good can stay, not even the audience. The threat of death encouraged viewers to act righteously in life so that they may get into heaven. These paintings could warn against excess, even in celebrating it. Clara Painters painted stacks of cheese and butter in reference to the Dutch phrase, dairy on dairy is the work of the devil. The bouquets painted by Dutch artists were impressive in their time for being impossible, bringing together in paint beautiful flowers which could never bloom simultaneously in the real world. 
Like the food on the witch's table, in a pre-globalized world, we must recognize this abundance and beauty as a fantasy. That fantasy made real may then either be a miracle or the revelation of something more sinister. <laughs>